I had the dizzy spells this morning, but the difference between today and yesterday, today I feel nausea. I'm getting worse. Called my doctor, left a message. I feel like I'm the verge of spinning. It's the most bizarre thing. At least I'm not in the woods. I ended up at a nice campground. Okay, I can't stop. How you need to stop recording? Just exiting the park. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Across from the pizza is this little health food store. So I looked up what was good for the vertigo. Beets. So they actually had beet shots. They had ginger powder. I'm gonna put it in my water bottle. It smells strong. I'm just gonna put that much in for now. He just took a poopy. Oh my God, I just saw a caterpillar take a poopy. What's he doing now? I think he does that when he feels he's under threat. He is so cute, oh my god, he is so cute, look at, oh, he is so cute. I'm hanging out with two, I think they're homeless guys. They're awesome. This is Tom, I literally went to the bathroom, came back and he had a fire going. And I'm like, how did you get a fire going so fast? And he says, I'm an arson. He's a, <laughs> he's an arsonist. It looks really clean, did you clean that thing? No. Tom and Lee cooked up these hot dogs in like <laughs> seven minutes would have taken me like 45. 40 of those minutes would have been trying to get the fire going. And beans too. Yeah, that's right, the beans. That's right, we have beans. Oh, sweet. They pay $4 a night and because they're seniors, I pay eight. They're living basically how I am. I don't think they have a home base and they have their bicycles. They're just going a very different style of biking. They're not bike touring or bike packing. They are just riding along roads at a regular pace, taking main roads and just going from these campsites to campsite. They're very neat, very smart, very kind, very helpful. They're really showing me some shortcuts, showing me maps. They drink, but you wouldn't know. They don't smell of alcohol. Really nice company. This is Nikki. <laughs> She's assisting me while I'll do laundry. We're the bathroom dweller. She's charging her phone while I'm doing laundry. It's a little amusing. But luckily I have hot water here. And then you dry it out wherever you can. Normally there's branches on trees and that's fine even if it's in the shade because it's so hot out, but there are no branches on these trees. The ones I call Sneezy because he was sneezing all night. So Tom, when you're climbing and climbing and climbing with those nubby tires up the hill, you're gonna take this. A what cliff is shot. Oh, is it gonna give me energy? Yes. <laughs> cool. And they're delicious. Okay. And you're gonna feel it in like maybe 15 minutes and you're gonna be like, wee, wee. I got this hill. You're gonna probably get diarrhea and have to shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> they're in their early 60s. They're concerned about me biking towards the cherries, which is where I'm going now, along F Flathead Lake. I told him I'll be careful. Had something bright and I was trying to tie it to my seat and then one guy's like, why don't you just wear it? <laughs> Duh. Tom had like the house, the boat, the wife, the whole thing, a job. And in 2002, he said he lost his work. And then he had to pay $1,400 a month. And he said that wiped him out. Now he's homeless. But that word is so interchangeable because there's just different levels of being homeless. Time to hit the main drag. I hear it's kind of dangerous, but we'll find out. Yes, it's very sketchy. I was riding on the gravel part, big trucks, people pulling campers. So would you use them to make pie? Is that mm -hmm. why they're called pie cherries? Yep. These two are the Lambert, the Lambert. traditional flathead cherry. Traditional flathead cherry. Okay. And these are called Rainier. Rainier, those are my favorite. The standard cherry is from flathead? Everybody around here calls them the flathead cherry because they've been here for okay. years and years and years. What if I wanted to go picking cherries? So you guys offer that service? Yep. Big Fork Orchards Cherries. This is Hans. He's going to show me about cherries. Just Don't be angry. Down. They come right off. Just lift up. Yeah, upward. lift up on the stem. What about the yellow and the reddish? Oh, that's one? what you want. And how do you know when they're ripe since they're multicolor? It's kind of a lighter yellow. So this, this is going to be way sweeter than this. Oh, interesting. Light, light yellow. I'm in a cherry tree. <laughs> These are the ones for baking, but they're so rich in color. Look how beautiful they are. <gasps> Oh, yum. The owner there said that this road, you actually lose the gravel part on the other side of the white line. So on my way back, I will lose any gravel. I will have to be in the road. He said I could take this little road here to the right. 
Oh, this is the perfect little road. Hello, handsome. Flathead Lake is, I believe, 27 miles long, 15 miles wide. It gives like so this ocean effect. I feel like I'm in an inlet and those could be like islands out there. So visually it's a really cool sensation. This guy's sitting on some property right here in this white little house. How many people have solicited him to buy his property? Just picked up some raspberries from this house. I thought it was raspberry. Whoa, picking, but it was not. I'm feeling the heat now that I was standing still in the sun. <laughs> they took them out of the refrigerator, so they're cool. So I'm gonna like come over here in the shade. I'm gonna just chow down. Like you put the little basket out. I think that's so sweet. There's no miscommunication where someone could say, well, I thought the basket was this big. I am feeling better today. I've did the exercises, chin to the right, lay back down, chin to the left, rotate over, chin straight down and sit up. It's still there for sure, 100%. When I put the term, which I don't remember, with the word mountain biking, it was very common. So that sort of solidified my, di my self-diagnosis. So that's really important for pe bikers to know the people that are bike packing or bike touring or anything. I just dumped down from the gas station where I got like an egg salad sandwich and stuff. So I don't know if this is private marina or what it is, but I'm gonna just sit on on a rock here with my sand my egg salad sandwich on the gas station and eat private members only this is a very new england feeling to me now we just had a v8 and you know what it was dang delicious and that sweet little girl there just came up to me because the woman told her she couldn't come in without a top on she went out and got a top and she was pissed off so she came and sat by me we were chatting i have a cherry delivery <laughs> n-a-o m i how come it's not with the E? If it was N-A-O-M-E, it would be Naomi. N-A-O-M-I. You got it. I just stumped out of the trail from the campsite. This is supposed to be a real rocky spot where people jump in. That's very cool. The water, look how clear it is. I was just staring over at one sailboat. You know, first you get here and you're overwhelmed in these places and all oh, this, and you start to kind of fall into that fantasy of you should want this. It will make your life great these are the things i always do i just like, imagine me that's me i have this boat and you've seen the town a bunch of times you've been around the lake i know that it will dissipate pretty fast listen i can get a lot of friends really fast if i go buy a boat oh i'll have so many friends and they'll just adore me and they will call me and check in on me all the time and, and then the boat goes away and the phone doesn't ring anymore and i know this because i actually dated two very wealthy men one had a boat that we went on a lot every weekend and at parties and that actually was a blast. And then I lived in the $3 million house in the fancy neighborhood and come in the door, you sit in the same spot pretty much on the couch. And so maybe the television was larger and the couch is larger and the room is larger, but who cares? You're just sitting down staring at a screen. Unless you were entertaining, it was sort of like a waste of space. It just didn't matter. It doesn't hold long-term value. That's a good way of putting it. I need to feel a purpose. It overrides having things, whether you're living in a trailer or whether you're living in a mansion. It doesn't matter. That's the route that I'm interested in. That's why I'm so unsettled. Like places in need, things to do, things you can join, help out. Because I know a job job for me would just put me in the, in the civilian grind. One thing I do crave is a little home of stability, a little place that I can unpack my stuff. I never went into the water yesterday because kids took up all the rock spots and it was just so noisy and oh, nice. I did feel a little vertigo last night and this morning and I went biking yesterday, but I went really slow and it wasn't choppy. So I don't know if that was a mistake. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go down there. I finally just brushed my hair after like three days. Hey, sweetie pie. You're smelling to see if I have any treats. You don't want any cherries, no, you don't want cherries. Hi, baby. Hi. This is Big Fork, Montana. They really took care of the buildings. They kept the colors in tune with nature. Still kept that Western look. Look at this fantastic cafe coming up here. That's a little casino right there. Cute. Wow. It's so quiet. Like, how are these artists going to make any money? This is so depressing. It's like packed with tourists at the campsites and campgrounds, but the shops and stuff are just look like they're really struggling. Downtown Big Fork was adorable. Unfortunately, I'm experiencing it during COVID and I haven't really been affected by COVID, but this was my first experience where it's a Saturday afternoon. It's sunny out. Granted, it's 91 degrees and it was dead. I really felt for the artists. You could hear them suffering in their booths and it was so hot. They're like, I'll give you, I'll take you half off or whatever because it's so freaking hot out. I wanted the fish and chips. 
Lee had told me that for like for ten dollars to give you a bunch at this one place. I thought, okay, that would be great because I've been eating at that burger joint. <laughs> Every day I feel like. I really wanted to get something downtown, but everything was like $13 for a sandwich. Well, I'm not gonna spend $13 on a sandwich. I find the fish and chips place cash only. Oh my God, the one thing, the one thing that I really wanted. So I'm gonna go eat, relax, and then go back to camp. And I don't really have that much to do. I'm gonna probably start packing up my bike, get my bags and everything organized. All right, that's it. Off to the burger joint. I'm back at my favorite place. Look how nice their burger is. I got a mushroom Swiss, $6 for $2.75 for a small fry. I mean, that's awesome. Yum, yum. There's Burger Town. <laughs> because I've gone there every day, they actually knew my name. But I showed up to order today. They're like, hi, Naomi. <laughs> I think it's the owner who took orders. I said, thank you for feeding me affordably during my stay here. A very efficient place, very clean place organized, great prices. I can't say enough positive things about that place. It's just run beautifully. Yay, Burger Town. No, Australia. <laughs> He's like, I'm glad you finally decided on where you're going. <laughs> but first I'm gonna go to Arizona. <laughs> if it's too hot there, I'm going to the Swiss Alps. <laughs> so, I'm with this bicycle from the 1970s. Yeah. <laughs> so Tom has been an absolute pleasure. He's made my stay here more enjoyable. Both of them leaves over there trying to make a fire, which Tom keeps saving. <laughs> so where do you think you're gonna go? What's your loop? I'm gonna go to Whitefish, then Eureka, then Libby, and then maybe Sandpoint, or come back this way to Thompson Falls or something. You chose that route just because you're sightseeing? Because I want to kill a month. I gotta like wait till it cools off in Arizona. Oh, you're killing time so till I gotta kill oh, okay. time. What's the name of that lake with the K? Is it with a kid? Lake Kukanuska. Yeah. Do that and go to Libby and you down from Is Libby a big kid. town? Like there's like Big Four? Yeah, it's kinda of like probably seven thousand people. I went to Lake Housey briefly. You were? I was living in Bullhead City trying mm. to flip a house. And Lofton, Nevada is right across the street. Yes. That's where the I big was. Casino. <laughs> it sure is. I was a bartender at Laughlin really? Casino, yeah. And the owner used to come over and yeah. I was new at bartending. I swear there'd be like 50 people at the bar and there'd be a band and I'd be the only bartender. He'd come in, he's a skinny little guy with white hair. I know, I see. Oh, you've seen I him? See. He had a seat at the bar. And he had one of these little flashlights. I'd have his bottles right here, right across in the seat. He'd take his flashlight and he'd go, tick, 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 tick. <laughs> He expected me to ignore the customers that were waiting before him. Yeah. Lee's here making his, you're boiling eggs. Yeah. It looks like it's for a photo shoot. I mean, the log is all black and the pot is black and the, be the fire flame is burning. Like, it's beautiful. <laughs> Tom <laughs> saved him. Otherwise he was making a smoke, a smoke pit. This is Lee and he's been biking for years and he's been all over the place and he's very knowledgeable on up, up and coming towns and what the rules are and he knows about transportation and campsites I and mean, he is the man. He literally could write a book about all the little tricks of the trade. He was wonderful to talk to. He's wonderful to talk to. It's a great conversation. You read a book called by U.S. Anderson, The Greatest Power in the Universe. And he's from Newport, Oregon. That's where I'm going. I'm glad I've waited because I had to condition my mind. Plus I had memories here. That's why you travel, you remember the places. Right. So if you get all disoriented, you just go back to that place and then everything just downloads again. This is the last lake in the Rocky Mountain uh, Trench and it starts in Southern Yukon and okay. it ends here. This gotcha. is the connection to the whole Northwest. Okay. Whitefish Lake, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. The Missoula dropped one of the largest ice creating the Columbia River okay. in the whole world. Oh. oh yeah, it's massive. And once you get into this area up here, you just get more and more and more excited. Salt Lake's just really the beginning, and then Yellowstone, and then Glacier, and then you go further north. That's the way everything is. When you lose one girlfriend, you, you get another one. <laughs> nice meeting you today, Emily. Yeah, it was a pleasure meeting you too. I may see you or I may not. You will. In the future, run across, run across. <laughs> we have been the only people here. Yeah. The three of us. It's a two week limit at most campgrounds and then you have to leave. You can't come back for 30 days. So if they weren't here, I would be here by myself. And it would have sucked. I mean, I learned so much from you guys. 
And it's just so nice having people around to shoot the shit with and just you've been so generous and kind. I learn a lot in whitefish. People are as interesting as you. So when you go to the back to the camp, Whitefish Lake, you want to go from Columbia Falls to Whitefish through the back way, which is the same way as okay. the Great Divide Trail. I feel like I should attempt the Blair Witch. I wonder how many of you don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm kind of whispering a little because I have somebody next to me, but it's amazing how much you can hear. I hope he doesn't snore. It would never have crossed my mind, but my mom, we went, first time camping for her, so excited to have that experience with her. The guy next to our tent was wailing all night long. I woke up and I'm like, where's my mom? And she's in the car. It doesn't really feel like camping until you can sleep with the rain fly off. I can see the sky and hear the leaves and the light breeze and like this is what it's supposed to be like and it never is for me. I'm always of the rain fly on. When I'm in the mountains, even when I'm in the low mountains, is there such a thing? Low mountains? <laughs> I guess you know what I mean. Why can't it be dry? What is it about a campground? I mean I'm next to a huge bed of water. I don't understand. So this is wonderful. I've had a shower. My hair is so soft. I just feel dry and refreshed. And I can smell campfires. Oh, I love that smell. When it's right, the conditions are right. Camping is really wonderful. But when they're wrong, they just fucking suck. Thank you.